Good morning, church family. Good morning. Visitors and whoever we might have, we're glad to have you. If you're uh, visiting with us today with social media or, or here, uh, your, your family. So we're glad to have you with us and appreciate the encouragement and the opportunity to get together this morning and another day that the Lord has provided for us. And uh, it's good to, uh, good to be assembled this morning and praying for those that cannot make it out for whatever reason. Uh, to be with us today, uh, do have some announcements to go through. We've got, uh, of course, our tonight service at six o'clock, uh, Wednesday night service at six, and then we have a. Uh, is the sign up sheet the t-shirt still active for the t-shirts? Okay. All right. And then we had the uh, sign up sheet for the Cumberland County Playhouse too. I don't know what the deadline on that one is. <clears throat> That's for a Christmas play. I was, right? I was telling them, last Sunday night I missed the softball there to get it to him because like we're already planning and attending a Christmas play. And I, it went right over me. So we talked about it Sunday night a bit, didn't we, Tim? I so. must miss 4th of July. <laughs> yeah, I know it. <clears throat> um, and then also uh, Kurt and Lisa were reminding us of uh, on April the 18th, the Casting Crowns will be having a concert at Memorial Auditorium. Anything to add? That's Am I right on that? Okay, good. And then the uh, we had a letter for uh, the Tennessee Valley Baptist Association is going to be celebrating Pastor uh, Dr. Mike Young commemorating his 50th year in the ministry, and that's going to be at the uh, Yellow Creek Baptist Church. And we're all invited. Uh, we need to RSVP that by April the 23rd. And then I think it's the, where's Barbara at? 28th, is that what you told me? I told you I'd forget. So, the 28th. Uh, and I'll put this in the foyer as well there. So everybody's invited. There's an address here. And that's from uh, Miss Joanne Copeland. All right. Any other announcements at this time? Mike, there are Easter lilies. There's some sitting there. And there's some in the back. If anybody would like to take them and oh, okay. plant them, they did yeah. well. So. Perfect. Yeah, it'd be a... Something that will come up each year. So, if you're like the bloom, put them in a car. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, because y'all, y'all had experience with that, didn't you? Trying to get them to bloom. You wore them out and put them in the car. <laughs> Jet on name too. Did you buckle them up when you put them in there? <laughs> All right. We're good on now. All right. Any birthdays this past week? Yes, we did. Who we call Rob had a birthday. All right, awesome. Huh? And sunshine had one. And sunshine, yeah. <laughs> Boy, you got her. Oh yeah, her sunshine was a big one. Somebody standing behind her is telling me right now. She's either five or fifty. I don't know which one. I mean, she 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 didn't look a day over five, so I don't really know how it could be fifty. Did you say Eli had one too? So we got and Dicey. Man, who, who didn't have a birthday last week? <laughs> That's awesome. I don't know that we... He like good timing, brother. You know, you got here earlier, you could have heard your favorite song. Is Victory and Jesus still your favorite song, Eli? <laughs> well, I'm going to say that it is because he loved it too much to let it go. Uh, all right, anybody else besides these four? That's awesome. Probably like a record. Well, let's sing Happy Birthday, Friends. Happy Birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear friends. May God bless you. All right. What about anniversaries? If we got four of them, I'm really going to be impressed. Yeah. If we have one of them, I probably would be. No anniversaries. I think we only had maybe one for the month of March. All right. What about scripture? Readers, or anybody want to come up and read? Hey, Mickey, good. Hey, good to have you with us, Mickey. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Matthew 25, 13, 14. What therefore you know, neither the day of the Messiah, but the entrance and saying, Very, I say unto you, I know not you not. What therefore ye know, neither the day nor the hour when the Son of Man cometh. Amen. Verses 27 through 29. The eternal God is who 
a refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. He will thrust out the enemy before you, and will say, destroy. Then Israel shall dwell in safety, the fountain of Jacob alone, in the land of grain and new wine. His heavens shall also drop dew. Happy are you, O Israel, who is like you, a people saved by the Lord, the shield of your help, and the sword of your majesty. The enemies shall submit to you, and you shall tread down their high places. Amen. I don't know if you've watched the news or not, and it doesn't matter if you have or not, uh, but Israel certainly, uh, I mean, Scripture tells us to be in prayer for Israel, but right now, it's for, certainly, but they're under a lot of attacks, you know, with the Iran and different things going on there, so uh, praying for Israel. Thanks for that reminder, too, of Israel. All right, anything else? Any other scriptures? All right. I just like to say thank you for all the prayers that yeah. Yeah, it's good to have you with us. Isn't it nice to know that uh, when you send out updates and stuff to the church family, you have praying for you. You know, it's uh, such a great feeling there and such a great honor for those that have the opportunity to pray for, for someone. So, uh, yeah, I'm glad to have you with us, Mickey. I know you had a quite a long week there, days even before this week, at least a two, right? <laughs> Having that support group sitting right next to you there. So, yeah, thank you, Mickey. All right. Okay. All right, so looking at our prayer requests, and uh, we've got some printouts in the back, and we've got several uh, updates and several new prayers this morning, so I'll read through those. We've got a praise with Mickey being home and at church this morning, so uh, and prayers uh, continue for recovery there. And uh, Pam and Cleet Vest, uh, surgery Tuesday, and that's both of them, right? <laughs> it's both. Have to go back to the uh, specialist. They found us bottom of my lung, too. So. Okay. That's the voice you need to have it beside you. That's what Michelle does for me when I start thinking something. She'll go, hey, it could be nothing, you know. Um, all right. And then, um, what is it? No fear, or fear not, 365 times in the Bible. But now I ain't telling you that because I'm good with it, Mickey. <laughs> That's what I have to remind myself. Uh, Mackenzie Morris, uh, praise Ray Harrison. Kara Reed, praise. It's good to hear that. Um, Michelle Mountain, um, and with her family uh, in the uh, L.A., I guess that's, uh, that's Louisiana for us, yeah. I have to start remembering what I learned back in grade school and the abbreviations of the states there. Uh, Jamie Wilson, uh, praying for her. She has a, uh, a half, gets a half dose of her treatment uh, tomorrow. Continue prayers for her and that her white blood count uh, would be improved. Um, praying for Billy Thedford's granddaughter, uh, also the Meigs County baseball player that's injured. Uh, Ashley Gould, uh, which is Alex Orch's friends, Brother Harold's family in Michigan, uh, Brother Harold's friend Richard, also Johnny Mincy, Georgia's friend's dad, uh, Dwayne's niece, praise and prayer for her, uh, Allison Walker, with, uh, as she does her cancer treatments and also the recent loss of her mom, uh, Lori Loden with loss of her brother, Rebecca Foster, Billy Ray Keelan, Blake and Allie Watts with the loss of a child. Della Burton, uh, feeling better but still needs prayer. Wendell Jolly. Thelma Wood will be having knee surgery on April 23rd. And then Frankie Daniels, uh, doing better, um, waiting on some test results. All right, so what would we like to uh, update or um, add to our prayer list? Uh, there was a young man that just walked up uh, to the church here a few minutes ago and asked, prayer for the Rose family that lives over next door here. That was awful nice. Yep. Somebody walked and asked for a church to pray for, for a family. Wow. Ashley had called Alex and left him a message and it took, took her quite a while to say all of it. The fishers have called with her speech, but she said, ask your mom if she'll put me on the prayer list tomorrow. And it took, and I, I felt so bad, and I was like, I'm going to wait till tomorrow. <laughs> but, yes. Because I almost just love her to death, and, you know, and she's good to her mom. That's awesome. So, they're missing her, because she's not been around. 
Yeah. yeah. Um, the, the young man also said that he just lost his dad on April 8th. I wish he would come in and have church with us. I know you. I know you did. I didn't even have to ask that. That would be awesome. Well, did. <laughs> All right. Am I Jean? Am I Jean? I thought. And Tate got a daughter married off yesterday. So <laughs> so prayers for Chad and Kirsten and uh, and their new endeavor there. Uh, all right, Is that it. Oh, yeah, folks, yeah. Yeah. And then Mallory, where's the last? Well, yeah. She's due the 15th, so let's remember those two ladies and her babies and that everything will go away. Oh, if I may, this Saturday, this coming Saturday, uh, I'm going to be trying to let you know. All right. Okay. Other things? <laughs> Good. All right, we're good. Mike, will you put Connor's family on? Yes. You're really going to get some time. Unspoken. Unspoken? All right. Am I? Sorry. No, you're good. You're good. I ain't tired of writing. No. Yes, yes. Your mom's had quite the uh, caregiver for a lot of folks, did not she? Yeah. And I've told her and your dad, I was like, your daughter's keeping y'all lifted up in prayers through these things y'all go through. So, all right. Okay. Anything else? Mom and be Do we need to, so what do you, what does everybody need to bring? Yeah, just so, like baby stuff. I think Hannah can probably tell us what they, <laughs> things they give away. I mean, I know they give away diapers. And I was laughing. Diapers, <laughs> formula, clothing. Okay. I can get a list and have it ready for next time. Okay.
and even get it out on announcements beforehand. Be so that's going to be on Wednesday night. Okay. Perfect. April twenty fourth. Okay. Awesome. I was laughing, Hannah, because I was aggravating you about doing announcements this morning. You didn't know it happened that quick, did you? <laughs> All right, we good. Still got room. Twenty-four. All right. Anything else? All right. Y'all doing good? So, Wilson, would you open some prayer this morning, please? Dear Lord, thank you, Lord, Father, for all your blessings, Father. Thank you, Father, for all you for all you for all you made this morning, Father. Been meeting this morning, Father. Been blessing us. Hang up on this afternoon, Father. Been meeting your will, Father. Been Thank you for church, Father. Just give them the word, Father, that we need to hear, Father. Just guide us all, Father, in the right place, Father, we need to help, Father, work all in that name. Amen. Amen. All right, Ray. <clears throat> it's going to be hard to sing about Jesus and not get that blood pressure up. <laughs> if we yeah, listen, don't don't if we listen to the word. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>
corner service. If you have a song you'd like to come up and share with us, sing for us, it'd be a good time to do it this morning. I got a song this morning. Oh, song. Man, you got a hot sermon for them today, I guess, Jim. Looks like a bit. <laughs> Y'all make him, make him feel like a celebrity. <laughs> Yeah, Michelle's got to go home with him. So, I mean, you know, ask her to carry his plate to him and everything. <laughs> yeah, you didn't, but you just had everybody else encouraged to do it. <laughs> Tate will take it however, though. Thank you, Tate. You to do something today that you wouldn't allow to do at the wedding. Crazier look you won this morning. I'm gonna try to do a song I hadn't ever sung in here that I wrote. It's about my mother, so y'all pray for me. I hope I make it through. I can't even remember what Tia did in this problem. Sunday. 
there was a little town that was established uh, in Mississippi, down on the Mississippi River, a little place called Fort Gibson. It was built initially around a cotton plantation. Uh, it was called Port Gibson because they were shipping cotton out of it, and uh, it was played a, a pivotal role in the Civil War and things around it. But there's one thing, if you drove into Port Gibson today, it's small, small little community, about 2,000, but if you drive in from the northern part, as you get in uh, about two or three blocks into the little community, you'll see a church, and on that church, is a hand. And it's a hand that is like this with a finger pointing up. It was dedicated to a preacher that was there. He was a very evangelistic preacher. And he was always talking to him about what it took to have faith to be with Jesus. That up pointed finger told him two things. That he wanted to offer the opportunity to everyone who would listen and believe in Jesus, the opportunity to be in heaven. There was a second point to that finger. He also said, there's one way, and that is through Jesus, the faith and the walk in Jesus. James, as a member, was the half-brother of Jesus, and he did not have faith in Jesus until after the resurrection. And he soon, because of his faith, was able to move into a leadership role in the early church of Jerusalem. But when he did, he found that this was quite a challenge that he was involved in because the people there that were accepting Jesus and following him at that time, they had some issues that were going on. And the issues related around belief, what they thought. In fact, if you look at that scripture, and we'll look at it in a few moments, uh, as we look at it, it, it talks about uh, faith and works. Uh, if you look at it in the Greek, it actually talks about belief and action, are the words that are used there as he does that. And so James was trying to deal with these folks. They were Jews, newly converted and they had come out of a background of belief that everything in relationship to God, falling in heaven, was built around the works, built around the set of laws. They had to live by them. They had to really do everything those laws said. And the leadership of the church, by the time Jesus came in, had it down to the point of exacting everything they had to do. They had to know, they had to understand, and they had to do it the right way. And so James comes along, and he sees them, that these that are fascinated by the new faith, but they're hung in between. They can't decide, what do we do? How do, how do we deal with this? And so James says, I want to give you a practical message. This is what I want. I want you to understand the blessings that come from fully accepting and receiving the gospel, understanding it, living in it. Unlike Paul, as he writes later on, as he comes along, writing, Paul was not dealing about problems in, in faith or, or saying you're doing this or doing that. James was saying, it's time you understood who Jesus was and what he was doing, what he was trying to make happen. And he says, I want you to understand what's available to you in blessings as you listen to the words of Jesus. He was trying to outline in a common sense matter how the followers of Jesus would have worked, how they would have walked, how they would have lived, what was available to them in this new belief. But he was doing something else. He was setting a stage for us in our lifetime of what we would face, what we would do. And he was saying to us, do you understand how to fully get into the blessings of Jesus, of what he was saying? He reaches to us. And still in our world today, we don't fully understand what was going on many times. And we look at 
faith in Jesus and saying, what, what does this involve? What what's we do to be a part of this? He starts out, as he writes, in the verses that 14 through 17, he talks about faith versus works. I like to look at it, what the Greek says, believe versus action. What does it mean to be involved in that? What was James talking about? Those verses writes, what profits a man if he says he has faith and has not works? What was going on was that the Jews, as they were converting, they knew about what they were saying about faith. In fact, Paul knew it well by the time he writes because uh, as he writes to him, he talks about his grace and faith gives him salvation. But James is saying something else. He's saying there's more to this walk with Jesus than just saying, hey, I believe. What James was saying is, you say you believe. What difference does it make? What does it make in your life? Do you live differently? Do you act differently? James was saying, if the Holy Spirit is living within you, as you profess, it ought to be visible. It ought to be visible in the way you live, in what you do, in your actions. And what he was trying to do was help them understand how to really receive the full fruit of faith in Jesus and their walk. But there were many around him saying, well, but you don't, you, you got to understand, it's not faith, it's what we do, it's our actions that makes us that way. And so James tries to explain. And in doing so, what he did was, across the years, people look at what he writes, and they misinterpret what James was saying. In fact, they say, well, James talks about works. Paul talks about faith. They're in direct conflict, but they weren't. When you begin to look at it, look into it, see what they were saying, they were saying the same thing. They just approached it in a different way. And so, as we look at faith versus works, we're reminded that what James was saying, what Paul was saying is this. If we accept Jesus Christ in faith because of grace, we need to look different in the way we live. So many of them were saying, well, you know, if we get in, into faith and we go through, go and go back and we talk about sometimes the uh, ones that were there and uh, they were trying to kind of circumvent what was taking place. They were saying, well, you can't do this and can't do that. What James was saying is, if you have faith, you believe in Jesus, then it, your life ought to look different. You ought not be living in the world and saying, hey, I like this. I can accept Jesus and do as I please. James was saying, when you accept Jesus, you do like he pleases. Big difference. He's asking you how to walk, what to do. Acts 4.13 talks about this time and frame. And, uh, James knew about this, uh, that uh, after the time of Pentecost we talked about last week, that Peter and John were out preaching. They were out preaching in the city. And they looked at them, and that 4, 4.13 says, uh, the Jewish leaders were amazed. Where did these unlearned men get the ability to stand and preach? And what more, why are the people listening? What are they saying that's making them you know, follow and listen to all of this? There was something that gave them confidence and power in what they said, what they were doing. They realized all of a sudden they actually believed in the message they were preaching. They believed exactly in what they were saying. 
And what James is saying is faith brings salvation if we believe in something enough to have faith in it, then something's going to happen to us. We're going to be different. We're going to live in different ways. He was saying to us, to the all times, he's saying, yes, faith is there, and faith brings work, works, but works alone will not save you. I worked for many years in disaster relief. I saw a lot of different groups that came in and worked. They did the same thing. They were doing the same actions and all uh, about trying to help people and make a difference in them. But many of them came in because they were looking to say, if we get involved in this, there's going to be a lot of money come down and we'll be able to get some of that. Many of them were saying, we won't be seen. We want everybody to see what we're doing and brag on us. Many of them just did it for control. But only the Christians that were actually there were doing it because they believed it was service for our Lord. It was a way of living out your faith and touching and helping and making a difference. That's what James was talking about in his day. He was saying, faith is there. Faith is critical. It's the beginning of our salvation. But Paul summed it up his work parts, he talks about uh, sanctification. And then what is he talking about? He's talking about works. He's talking about doing the things. So they're saying the same thing. The complete Christian is one who has accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior and lets him live within their life. That's what the Holy Spirit was all about. He came to teach us how to do and what to do. And so James goes on and he says, faith is critical, but there's a product of faith. James 2, 18 and 20. He said, uh, James wrote, I will show you my faith by my works. James was well aware of what he was saying. James knew exactly what he was talking about. As half-brother of Jesus, when he was growing up, knowing Jesus, he had full confidence that Jesus was his brother. He knew Jesus was there, was the one that took care of him. But he had no faith that Jesus was Lord. What a difference. Faith of someone being your brother didn't make any difference. It was only a life-changing faith when he realized Jesus was Lord, that he was able to have the ability to do and to uh, do things to share and to live in faith. And so James, as he wrote, he said, faith, there's a product of it because when Jesus becomes Lord in your life, your life changes. If it doesn't change, then you need to be questioning what went on, what was taking place. Paul expressed it in Ephesians 2.8. He said, by grace you're saved through faith. It was a gift. But Paul goes on in his writes to the different churches. He says, okay, this is what's going on within your church, within your life. And the problem is that you're not finding the fulfillment of faith by doing, by your actions, by what you're about. Writer of Hebrews in 11.6 says uh, that without faith, it's impossible to please him. In other words, in simple words, when you compare the two thoughts, the faith, the action, they're saying the same thing. They're saying that those two words are inseparable. If you have true faith in Jesus, something's going to happen in your life. You're going to do something. You're going to make a difference in what you're about. What they're both saying is this, that salvation comes by believing, through believing, and in believing that you're brought in to a full salvation 
an understanding. It's a living process. It begins with acceptance and matures through the actions that we have until we reach Jesus. James knew that. Paul expressed it. What did he say? He said that in our relationship to Jesus, three things are involved. Justification, the beginning, the faith. Sanctification, the living out your faith and what you do. And glorification, when you see Jesus in the end of that day. He was saying to us, faith, yes. Action, yes. Full salvation, yes. And one day, we'll be with Jesus. And what the preacher was saying is he held up that one finger. <coughs> Heaven awaits us, but there's only one way, one open door, and that's to Jesus. I wondered as I was looking and studying this week, if possibly James remembered back to the story the disciples had told about the fig tree. Remember, Jesus was coming to Jerusalem not long before the crucifixion. And he saw the fig tree. We've talked about it before. It had its leaves. It was growing. It looked good. There was only one problem with it. It didn't have any figs on it. It was not producing any fruit. And Jesus, with these disciples, who were trying to learn, trying to understand what was going to take place, said to the fig tree, you're useless, you're not bearing fruit. And remember, he cursed it. And a few days when they came back by, the fig tree was dead. What Jesus was saying is, if you think you can just live in a faith and nothing else, there's something not right. There's something not right about you. Jesus was saying to us, it's important that you have a product from your faith. It's important that you do something to make a difference. It's the importance of his church and our fellowship together that prepares us for that. We're to be people of action, not people that are sitting and not doing anything. I'll never forget the preacher that told you that the little church I grew up in was called Pilgrim's Rest. We had a preacher that was there preaching a revival. And he said, you know what the problem is with Pilgrim's Rest? Too many pilgrims are resting. The problem with our churches today is that too many of us rest. We're content in faith and we don't step out into the action we need to do to make a difference. I don't think that anyone today that in reality thinks at all when they watched the attack last night and watched all that was going on in our world about us that thousands of years after the nation of Israel came into being is still the center point of our world. God's hand is still there. And he's still saying, watch Israel, watch Jerusalem. It's all built around that. It's built around that faith. And when he shows us that, he says, and remember, I've taken the second step. Jesus is there. Jesus is the one, the only one. Through that, if you have a chance this week to uh, see the message that was preached by the pastor at First Dallas this morning, it was all about that. One way, the only way, Jesus. People can come up with all the other ideas, but there's only one way. And the third thing that James was saying to us over in the 21st through the 23rd verses, he said, faith becomes complete in action. Faith in action. Faith fully matures when it brings actions. That was what he was talking about in those verses. Remember, Paul in 1 Corinthians 3, 1 and 2 says, As young believers, I gave you milk as infants to grow. But he says, 
The problem now is you're still needing milk. You haven't matured. You haven't done what's available to you. James was saying to the people of his day and the people of our day, do you realize what's available to you in faith in Jesus? It's not just simply saying, well, I've got that behind me. It's a new life. It's a new way, a new way to walk. And blessings beyond belief in what you do. Paul was talking to the church then and saying to them, you know, y'all are still trying to hold on to the world and hold on to Jesus. And that really is a stretch that you can't make. You've got to give up one or the other. Jesus dealt with it in his parable of the sower. He said, there went out a sower one day to sow seed. We're like that. We go forth. He said, you know, we're that seed. And he said, some fell on the path. It was hard. Didn't come up. And the birds came. And they ate up the seed. They were soon gone. Nothing was left. Some fell on rocky ground. And they began to uh, actually grow a little bit. But there wasn't enough moisture. And before long, they withered away. He said, but some fell on good soil. The soil was there. The moisture was there. And it came forth. And it gave a good crop. What's he saying? As believers, where are you? What are you doing? So I read about that and thought about the sower again. I remember when we first uh, moved back uh, to Tennessee and I had my two little garden spots and I tilled them up good and planted the seed and they grew and uh, they would grow uh, tomatoes and squash and okra and corn and everything you wanted to plant would grow and look good and uh, they'd make uh, what you wanted out of your fruit but you know uh, since the last two or three years when I don't get around so well anymore I don't plow that ground anymore. And I can go out there and I can look and look as long as I please. And there's not going to be a tomato, not going to be any corn, not going to be any okra, because we do not put the effort into it. Good soil, but no effort. We as believers, when we have faith, we're on the best soil around. <coughs> But without effort by us, nothing's going to happen. If we don't live out our faith, nothing's going to happen. Does it speak to us? Does it remind us? That's all James was saying. If you got the faith, then something ought to be happening. Something ought to be happening in the way you live in your life. Over in the scripture there, as James writes on, he talks about, said, Abraham became a friend of God when he put faith into action. Abraham had faith. He believed enough to move and move into this new land he was promised. When his faith really came into action was when he was willing to offer his son. He was willing to give all that he had to God in love and faith. James is saying, we as believers need to be willing to give all we have into the action for Jesus, into our lives, into living for him in what he says. He goes on and tells us that that comes through several things. It comes through prayer. It comes through his word. And it comes through actions that emulate what Jesus did when he walked here. What a reminder. It's living out your faith. Faith brings us salvation. Actions, actions bring us maturity in Christ. We become a complete Christian. And what's our goal? To live in such a way that we are people that Jesus can look at that people that we are people that people can look at and see Jesus in us. 
James' words were this. Faith brings actions and works. If not, something's not exactly right. And we need to be looking to say, hey, Jesus, what do we need to make us totally complete Christians? Help us to do that. For without that, we find that our faith sometimes is empty. And when we need it most, we say, Lord, where are you? It's not the Lord missing. It's us missing living for him. Challenge you this morning. Stop, look at yourself and say, am I a complete Christian? Am I walking with him? Can people see Jesus in us in what we do? Let's pray. Father, as we come this morning, we come knowing that you are our Lord and Savior. We know that you promised us that through grace and faith we can have salvation in you. But James and Paul both continue to write to say, that's not the end point. That's the beginning point. Faith begins us. Action makes us complete. Father, help us that in our faith that we're learning to live as you called us to. And we're learning to be like Jesus in all that we do. What a challenge that is. But Father, we know that that's what makes us what you want as mature Christians changing the world about us. Father, I pray this morning if there's anyone here that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior, they would stop and say, Lord, come into my life. Make me a new and help me to take this walk. Jesus reminded us it's a narrow path, but all the blessings at the end of that walk help us to live that way. Bless us this time, during this time of our invitation. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. Let's stand together. Three, nine, and six.
for the message he has for us today. Let's be active in living out our faith in all that we do. As we close this morning, Kurt, would you say our closing prayer? Our gracious Lord and Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this day you've blessed us with. We praise you most importantly for the great precious gift of eternal life through the shed blood of Jesus on the cross for us. Father, we ask that you give us the boldness, the willingness to share our faith, to uh, live the life that we need to live. It needs to be uh, that light shining in the darkness for the lost to see. And we pray for all the ones on our prayer list that we've lifted up. We pray for, uh, we know your, your answer will be uh, your will and not ours. We pray for Israel. We lift them up. We know that you're always, controlled, always in control of everything, Father. We just ask that you continue to bless us and lead us through this day and the rest of our days as we look forward to the return of, of Jesus to come take us into the clouds. And Father, we, again, we thank you for this boldness, and we, uh, and we ask this all in the natural name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And all God's children say, Amen.